Welcome to the Wander Learn Show. I'm your host, Francis Tapon. Every year, I look at Plan B's stock-to-flow models and critique them. I started this in 2020, and I believe that the model itself is flawed and it will fail. I know that it will take several years for that to play out because the model has a wide range of acceptable values, as I've pointed out many times. The fact that right now, for example, you can have a price between anywhere between 100000 and a million per Bitcoin and it's still acceptable. But eventually, because it's exponential and a very steep rise and doesn't account for diminishing returns, the model will fail and has to fail this decade. So let's take a look at how it's doing right now. Let's dive in. We're looking at this chart of the Bitcoin stock to flow price, and as you can see, this is the long chart. You can see it's been following along quite nicely, but all of a sudden here, it's starting to break down. Let's zoom in a little bit more on this particular discrepancy right there. As we zoom in, you can see it's barely hanging on by a thread to the lower end of this regression band. It's in the light blue area, and if it drops off the light blue area, I, I would say, and stays consistently below the light blue area, then you can definitely say it's failed. Now, re remember, this has huge deviations. You have a price right now that's acceptable anywhere between uh, roughly on the low end, 110,000 to the high end of a million. <laughs> it's just funny just saying that. Um, a price, a prediction between 100,000 and a million. Somewhere in that price, that's where Bitcoin will be. Anyway, according to here, it's at 117,000 right now, and it should be actually at 366,000. In a few months, it should be at about 375,000 and stay around 375,000, 380,000. For as an average price, remember that's got to be the average. So to get to an average, and right now we're only down at 117 or so, you needed to go up to 500,000 to kind of make that average happen. And lately he's been kind of backpedaling on that. Just to drill in the point that the stock to flow model, it's got several models and one of them is the cross asset model. And this cross asset model has completely failed. As you can see, it's well off of its projected target range, which right now we should be, according to a cross asset model, to be at $5 million per Bitcoin. That's not happening. Anyway. Uh, here's a nice chart about the NUPO of how much actual euphoria we have. Uh, we haven't gone up to the higher levels yet. A couple of days ago, Plan B put out a video and you can just check out the video where he says something interesting because you can tell that he's backpedaling. He's like saying, well, if it just gets up to 300000 because right now it should average a price of half a million dollars per coin. That's the average price. So therefore, if right now we're at 100,000, well, it's got to get up to well above half a million in order to kind of balance it out for the cycle. But now he's like saying, well, maybe if it just gets to 300,000 or maybe if it just touches, listen to what he says. Now, 60% of the people think uh, that Bitcoin will not reach 300,000, so that's this line, at the end of 2026. That's me. End of next year. So one and a half year from now, this is the 300,000 points. 60% of the people think we're not going to go there. That's me. In my opinion, we will. In fact, I think the we go a little higher to the stock to flow target of 500,000 on average. And that's a very rough model, of course, based on scarcity, stock to flow ratio. And it has a range of 250,000 to 1 million. So the average could be... 300,000 or 600,000. That's all good. Who knows? But uh, at least it will be higher than what most people think. This next section of his video is also revealing. Plan B has always refuted the idea of diminishing returns. And yet, look at him analyzing his own graph where he, he notices that, hmm, these cycles were just one year, one year, one year. And then now we have a bull market of a year and a half quite long, so we should be overdue. And yet he categorizes it later as saying it's not really much of a bull market. He calls it a strange bull market because it's relatively flat. And each one is flatter than the next places. He talks about a huge gain, a smaller gain, smaller gain, smaller gain. Well, guess what that's called? That's called diminishing returns, my friend. <laughs> and it's, yeah, a strange bull market. It's a very long bull market and a, a very flat bull market. Flat. So normally a bull market is a year. One year. 
maybe a little bit less or more, but about a year, and now we're one and a half year in already. Um, so it's longer, but that's that's all, all okay. Uh, and it's also flatter, right? 2013, we went 100x in the red dots. Um, 100 2017, 10x. 10x. Uh, last time, 2020, 2021, about six times, and now six we're, X. well, three times three uh, up. 100x, 10x, 6x, 3x. What does that sound like, folks? Sounds like diminishing returns to me. And he still doesn't want to admit to it. And in another part of the video, toward the end there, he talks about how the realized price for the six month basis of the realized price, it just goes, never goes below the six month price if it's a bull market. Take a close look at the video. If you look at the last six data points or so, the little red dots, a couple of them are actually below the yellow line that is the six month realized price indicating that we could be in a bear market. Now, it has recently jumped up above it, so we're okay again, according to that model. There's no bear market uh, warning signs whatsoever. Like, uh, well, this would be a bear market sign, right? If Bitcoin dropped below the six month uh, realized price, that's, that's, that's all good. Same here in 2018, red dot below the yellow line here in 2014. That's a sign that you should uh, watch out and a bear market could, could, could start. As well as, for example, the yellow line, the, the six month realized price dropping below the, the blue line, the, the two year realized price. Well, that's not the case at this, at this time. We're still in a uh, rising realized prices uh, area where Bitcoin is above all the realized prices, same as in all the bull markets in the past. It's going to fall below that realized price, six month realized price. And I predict it's gonna happen this year. If you look at my predictions in the upper right hand corner, I'll just show you a segment of it, but I feel that this year, even though we're gonna to go to maybe $150,000 per coin, we're also gonna stumble down to well below 100,000, possibly as low as 50,000. I made that prediction in January of this year and I'm still sticking by it. And here's my most controversial prediction is that Bitcoin will lose half its value. Right now it's hovering around $100,000 and you know I expect it to go down to $50,000. Um, it might go up to $150,000 briefly during the year. I'm not saying it's gonna go straight down the toilet from the beginning, but once the recession hits, Bitcoin will go down with all of the other assets, including the stock market and um, real estate and things like that. I was having a conversation with a famous YouTuber who's talks a lot about finance. His name is Nicholas Pardini. And he was telling me something quite critical about Bitcoin. He said, I'm not a big fan about Bitcoin. I said, why? He said, because it has never survived a true recession. The day it survives a recession, a full blown recession, then I'll become a believer. And he's got a good point. Even though I disagree with him, I think it's going to survive a recession. But one thing is clear that nobody's really thinking about is that Bitcoin really hasn't survived a true full-on recession since it was created because it was created during the 2008-2009 financial crisis. It was just a baby, didn't have any trading history. So you can't really call that a recession. The only recession that Bitcoin has really faced was the one during COVID, which is the most bizarre of all recessions out there. It was super sharp, super straight down. And guess what happened to Bitcoin? Look at the chart. Bitcoin crashed during that very strange short recession that happened. Now, what if we get a more typical normal recession? My prediction is that Bitcoin is going to tank like many assets. One of the things that irritates me a lot about the Bitcoin bulls and the people who are Bitcoin fans, and I consider myself one, but many people have this argument that says, you know, Bitcoin is a safe haven asset. So when the world goes collapsing and the zombie apocalypse starts to occur, everybody's going to flock to Bitcoin. It's going to be the safe haven. And then meanwhile, at the same time, they say when there's a bull market going in the stock market, there's a tight correlation with the stock market. When the economy is booming, people are going to buy Bitcoin. Heads, they win. Tails, they win. No matter what, Bitcoin is always going to win. No asset works that way. All assets has their strengths and weaknesses. They perform well under certain conditions, poor in other conditions. There are some assets that are kind of middle of the road assets that kind of don't go have these wild gyrations. But the bottom line is there's no perfect immaculate asset that goes up all the time under all conditions. And Bitcoin's certainly not one of those. 
when a recession hits, and I am confident it's going to hit in 2026, there's a chance, good chance, I believe it's actually going to start hitting in October of 2025. So we'll see. The bottom line is, whenever a recession hits, even if I'm wrong about when it hits, it's going to hit at some point, it always does, Bitcoin will suffer greatly. It is a risk on asset and people run away from risky assets during a recession. They go to safe havens. And Bitcoin today is not considered a safe haven. It is considered a risky asset. So that's why it's going to hit hard Bitcoin. And that's when it's going to be truly tested and we're going to hit lower lows than people expect. And so that's my general prediction and thesis as to why Bitcoin is going to do poorly at the end of 2025 and certainly into 2026 and why the stock to flow model will utterly and catastrophically fail in that period of time and forever thereafter. So it's an unpopular opinion that I have. It's the fact that most people are talking about hitting brand new highs and it's going to be gangbusters and the four year cycle and all that kind of stuff. And I do think that we're running out of steam in this bull market. I'm very bullish on Bitcoin in the long term, but in the short term, I'm quite bearish. I think we're going to have a tough end of this year and it's going to spill over into 2026 where the carnage will continue into 2026. And eventually things will soften out and just eventually we'll start roaring back up but that won't, we won't see that until 2027. So a lot of the people who have been predicting Bitcoin of a million dollars, two million dollars, five million dollars by the end of this decade, it's a pipe dream. I don't like to say that. I wish I could be more bullish, but I have to be realistic. Diminishing returns is a real thing. It affects all asset models and Bitcoin is not immune. If you're a bit skeptical about the stock to flow model and you're starting to see that it has cracks in it, be sure to share this video with lots of people and share my other videos about the subject. You'll find my playlist at the end of the video. So enjoy. This is France Tapon encouraging you to wander and learn.